Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Einstein Bagels, many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. This is part of the e-commerce mastery series where top sellers and experts teach you what really works to boost your e-commerce business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com. And if you're an entrepreneur running a six, seven, or eight figure business and want to grow and want to be around other top performers, this is for you. It's a group of top entrepreneurs that come together to solve their biggest business challenges and leave with lifelong friendships. Rise 25 is run by myself and my co-founder, John Corcoran, who's a former White House writer under Clinton, Silicon Valley entrepreneur and attorney, and check out Rise25.com. Today, I'm excited. We have Kimberly Krupe Dobbins, founder of Simple Squares Organic Nutrition Bars. She bootstrapped the company after going on a sabbatical from Morningstar. She went from making the bars in her kitchen to selling over 1 million bars in a year. And they're sold in, they're sold in Whole Foods, Starbucks, and many more. Kimberly, thanks for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jeremy. You know, Kimberly, since this is the e-commerce mastery series, I always ask, what's been the lowest moment and what's been the proudest moment? Okay. What's been the lowest moment and how you pushed through? I think the lowest moment for me, because it was before we got started, was the the leaking of the packages. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you have all this momentum. That's painful. Years in the making, yeah. And then you're thinking, is this all going to fall apart right now before I even launch? <laughs> what do you think happened there? Because you, it's not like you had made a lot of different bars and that hadn't happened before. What, what do you think it was? It was more in our uh, process of how we were actually laying out the bars. Um, so, yeah, all part of the extrusion. Wow. Because it also makes me think, well, did, was it maybe the packaging or was definitely the bar at the time? Were you thinking anything else was the problem? No, it was definitely the ingredients. You knew, yeah. Yeah. And then, so what do you do? How do you react to that? Like as a business owner, entrepreneur, you know, do you take like a a day just to like, I don't want to think about it? Or are you immediately calling someone? What did you do at the time when, if you remember, when you you got the call? Um, so, well, it, it's actually funny. I didn't get the call. I went to open a box to ship to a customer. <laughs> and it was it was dripping. So I was like, oh, this isn't good. Um, so I immediately called the co-packer. And, uh, you know, we tried to work through yeah, it. Yeah. And, um, obviously didn't solve it that day, but you know, they got the R and D team. I have a wonderful manufacturer. They got the R and D team together. Um, and we were able to, you know, try different scenarios, get back into the schedule to do another pilot and see if it would work. And, um, but yeah, it took probably eight months. Well, maybe not that long, but by the time it, by the time we got to it launch, launched, it was yeah, eight months, yeah, but yeah, yeah. we figured it out earlier, which was good. Yeah. So yeah. you just end up eating 2000 bars. Like what happens to those bars? <laughs> Yes. If you have a batch that goes bad, I'm gonna drive over. Tell me, and I'll, I'll buy them and eat them. <laughs> so funny you say that because um, this is horrible. I mean, we did. We had a lot of bars left over, and they're still sitting at you know my parents' house in New Jersey. And my dad, every now and then, will call me and be like, "I'm just trying one of those pilot bars, and they're not bad." I'm right. Like, it's been five years. You right. can't. You anymore. should not be. Eat- yeah, like you need to get rid of those. Hey. If the- <laughs> Maybe the oil preserved it. Maybe you're onto something there. Well, that's the thing. It could be a natural. The honey is a natural preservative. So, yeah. But every time he calls me and tells me that, I'm like, you, it's time to stop. <laughs> we can eat the loss at this point. <laughs> right. Literally. What about the proudest moment? Hmm. Proudest moment. That's a great question. Um, the proudest moment. I would say we were um, interviewed by the New York Times mm. for a group called the Story Exchange, and it's about yeah. I saw that; it was really good. Yeah, yeah, I think that was I. You know, I was really proud of that. I was proud of where we, you know, how we had grown up until that point. Um, you know, some days you wake up and you're just proud to still be in business. <laughs> so yeah. But um, yeah, I think working with the story exchange in the New York Times was a, um, a proud moment. What did it feel like, though? I don't know who you got the call from about Starbucks. How did you find out about that? Oh, it's so embarrassing. Um, 
we were at Natural Products Expo West and this, uh, the buyer, I didn't know it was the buyer, but the buyer comes up to me and she's like, Kimberly, hey. And I was like, oh, I must know her. You know, so I leaned in, I gave her a big kiss and uh, she's like, hey, I'm, you know, so-and-so, the buyer for Starbucks. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm more That's what got you in. That's a good thing. Let's <laughs> hope so, but yeah. Um, so we found out there and uh, yeah, we've kind of been working. You mean she just went up to you after they had placed the order telling you she was the buyer or what? No, it was just to say we've decided um, that oh. we forward. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, it was just that first initial. But again, I, she was so friendly and I thought she knew me and I'm, you know, a very... Um, passionate person and so i gave her you know a big hug and then she told me who she was and yeah. i i think i was about three shades of purple how does that feel though she comes up to you and this is you know what six years in the making um yeah well we i'm uh i need to go back and look when we first initially touched base with them yeah. but um yeah it, it was a it was a great feeling and it was very unexpected so um we were thrilled yeah so what else? What is uh, what should we leave people with? Let's see. So for people starting their own businesses, again, I think it goes back to you know, bottom line is going to be numbers. Have a really solid plan in place for not only um, you know the growth of your company, but also how you're going to finance it. Um, yeah. I was fortunate enough to be able to bootstrap for four years, and then we uh, took on investment last year. Oh wow! Congratulations. How do you decide to take on investment or not? Just you're growing so quickly. I think it's to keep up with scale, and yeah. you know, in order for us to be able to continue and just work on cash flows um, and be able to look at new product development, I think you can either go. It doesn't have to be one of two ways, but the two most popular routes are going to be grow it slower and organically, and don't take on investors, or pedal to the metal. You know, mm. we're going to ramp it up. For sure, um, and sure. it's it's different for every business. Yeah, I'd yeah. say definitely that, and then again going back to kind of being persistent and not shutting down when people close the door on you because there will be several of those, and yeah, riding yeah. riding the wave. Kimberly, thank you so much. Hugely valuable. Everyone should check out simplesquares.com. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great day.